Okay, welcome to the webinar. We are recording. This um, webinar today is all about the creative process and writing and um, we've got the lovely Claire Diamond with us who um, I've really been enjoying Claire's blog posts. Um, I just find them really insightful. I get to hear new things for myself in Claire's writing and I just really wanted to reach out to her and ask if we could have a, a conversation which then has turned into this more open webinar so um, um, maybe more people will join us maybe they won't but that's absolutely fine it's recorded so obviously other people can enjoy it afterwards anyway so thank you for agreeing to have this conversation today Claire I'm conscious that I can hear my twins in the background so when when I'm not speaking I'm gonna mute myself so then if you remind me if I try and talk again and I'm just <laughs> remind me I need to, <laughs> to unmute again that would be that would be great so um, I just I think really I just wanted to dive in there's been no prep for this I've not met I've not met you before Claire so I don't know anything about you so I suppose it'd be lovely for you to just share a little bit about yourself and about um, um, your writing and then we'll just just go with what what occurs to you to say and we'll just go from there really is that okay yeah, sure thank you Sarah thanks for having me here and so nice to meet you and so lovely to see Sam and Sue there as well um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a coach, a transformative coach, having done the Super Coach Academy with Michael and then various other courses and, and now working with Garrett and Team IO. And um, yeah, it's interesting, the writing thing. I, I have always loved writing all, all my life. I've, and what I'm seeing now, in, now that I know a bit more about what's going on with it and what's going on in our minds is is that that I mean there's so many ways to describe it like intoxication almost or beauty or absorption in in what we're doing which I I, I love with the process of writing of just really what I really do have the sense of everything else just fading away <clears throat> everything else and, and just you know that feeling of uh, it comes into my mind and then I write it down and it's so um and I, and I you know and I see, I see other people have that with writing or they have it with anything else is sport or singing or coaching or accounts or you know any literally anything else it can it can be there in and and so I think when I was thinking a bit about this call, I was thinking, I have a lot of people now saying to me they would like to write more or they'd like to do more blogging or they, they feel like they should be writing a book. And I was thinking about the, I think the only reason why anyone would ever write ever is because they have to. And the have to can be in two completely different directions. It can be a have to because there are, there's words and there's ideas building up in my head and I can't do anything else apart from let those come out into the world. That, you know, that feeling of, so I'm going to explode if if I don't if I'm not the channel for for what needs to come out in the into onto the page somehow, which is fascinating. That's a whole area for us to explore. And the other have to is because I think I should. You know, I I, I see other people blogging, and I think I should write in order to raise my profile or. I think I have to write a book in order to be taken seriously or um, I have to write because without that I don't have any presence online or and um, and that's a really interesting area as well um, because it's also all that set of thinking about shoulds and what's going on in this made-up world of ours that mean we have to be doing something or other are also the same reasons why people don't write, you know, because people are thinking, 
I would like to write, but I worry what people would think of me, or I'd like to write, but I worry that I would get it wrong, or um, it would be boring, or I wouldn't get the grammar right, or the spelling would be terrible. Or, and, and so that whole area, I think, is also so fascinating that when what we're making up about the world that means that we should or shouldn't be doing something. And, and what I'm exploring myself and with my clients is that there's, I think at any given time, we're always like oscillating between the two. And, and there will be those moments of just pure flow with the words and with the ideas. And there'll also be those moments where, you know, we, we may be committed to writing a blog and we don't want to, we haven't got any ideas, there's no content coming. And, and yet we, we somehow make ourselves show up at a computer in order to put something down. And, and it's in the showing up that we create a space for us to move into a, place of inspiration and I love this um there's a great book called rest and, and in it he quotes Scott Adams who wrote the Dilbert campaign um Gil Dilbert cartoons and Scott Adams talks about getting up every day I don't know I think from half six to half ten and just sitting at his cartoon drawing board and he calls it um he, well, he says all we can ever do is create um set a creative trap and see what happens. And so I think there is, there's also the, the, there's the element of that sort of showing up, even, even when we don't feel inspired and we don't really have, the, you know, we don't really know what we're gonna write about, but the very fact of sitting in a chair with a cup of tea and a computer is creating a space. It can't happen without it. So it's, it's, it's creating the form that the formless can, can show up in. Um, and, then, and then along with all of that is, is what we're thinking about what other people are, are going to think of what we write and whether it's gonna be good enough. And that's, and that's a whole fascinating area as well because essentially we are writing for other people. You know, otherwise we wouldn't, publish books or we wouldn't post on Facebook, we'd just write a journal and, and that would be it. And so there always is an element of an audience and thinking what's out there. But it's, it's also totally made up. <laughs> like I've got no idea, I've got no idea what other people are gonna think of a blog post or none, none whatsoever. And, and yet, there's the, they are out there, those people who are going to be responding to it. And that's, that's an interesting, I'd love to hear what everyone else is thinking on, on that area. Cause I, I've still not, haven't got to the bottom of writing for a group of people that we can only ever know about in our, in our thought, you know? Um, but for me, for me, the, the most, exhilarating feeling is is those moments of like in big magic elizabeth gilbert talks about like grabbing an idea by the tail and pulling it in and i really feel that like it's like it's out there and i'm i'm somehow pulling it out of the ether and into into the world and that's really cool you know where where does that come what how where does the idea come from it's just so so cool to to see it in action and to be be the converter in a way between the formless and the form is is really cool yeah <laughs> yeah that's yeah that sounds a, a, an amazing uh process and um what i what you reminded me of actually is um just before this call so at the moment i'm running a mastermind and um i um i posted in that group just letting them know behind the scenes that i was um my hands were shaking as i was typing to them in the in the group because this is my first ever open 
webinar where you know people are gonna people who I don't know are gonna see me talking to you Claire and um, you know and so I have all of the thoughts of well who am I I'm not a I'm, I'm not a, ho a webinar host and, and all of this kind of thing and what I noticed is often my thoughts will when I consider, well, who am I right? Who who is watching me? Who or who am I writing to? Uh, who's going to who's going to see it? It can often bring up for me thoughts of basically people like of people criticising as opposed to it being received, you know, received well. And I just find that quite fascinating that that's that's the default at the moment that my thoughts will go to that it's um, that somebody somebody cross. Is out there <laughs> waiting to watch me or waiting to read something when the reality of course is the people on this webinar and the people that are going to want to watch the webinar are there because they're interested <laughs> so it's the, it's the the opposite of what seems to yes. come up in that first instant and if I was of course to buy into those thoughts I wouldn't do the webinar I wouldn't write I wouldn't do anything um, so yeah, it's 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 a it's a shame when people do believe that um, that the thoughts that they're having mm. are true and real, and that and that that's the yes, of course, I'm going to be criticised, and I'm going to be this, that, and the other, um, because most of the time, that really isn't the really isn't the case. So I wonder if you could speak a little bit more to that in terms of um, when you're when you first started writing or even before you had more of an insight into how the mind works, what was going on for you in, in order to still take inspired action and to still kind of. Yeah. It's such a, it's such an interesting area, isn't it? This, this, what we do with an idea that comes to us and <clears throat> Mara, Mara Gleason on the, on the, on the book, um, club recently talked about Eric saying the um, the the greatest untapped resource in the universe is ideas that are ignored or dismissed or you know that people don't feel worthy to go with an idea that they have and um, oh it's so true isn't it it's you know just how like we have it's like such a gift to us these ideas from nowhere and then and then just how much stuff can pile in on top of it to, to make sure it never sees the light of day. And I think, I, I guess for me, there's just sometimes an idea just like has its own life really and, and just comes out and, because I get, I mean, in, in particular, the one I wrote around the Me Too campaign, I think if I'd, if I'd really, if if I'd allowed insecure thinking to around that, I, I wouldn't have ever written it or published it, I think. Um, and so I think there's, it's just, yeah, I, I guess, I guess it's, it's, it's what, um, what has to come out will come out. There's nothing we can do about it. And when we really, are more and more clear about the nature of thought and how that that roller coaster of what we what we think we can do and and not do is completely irrelevant to actually what we're doing <laughs> like underneath it we're just doing doing the stuff anyway um often and yeah i like yeah i think um it's interesting with the with writing about what we see it, you know, we're all, all three principles or inside out um, people who follow up working within this understanding. And um, what we, it's interesting that level of truth that we're getting to and, and what that brings up in our own minds and how we then express that, whether it's through, through writing or, or speaking or coaching or, poetry you know and anything it's um I think we're very privileged really to to be having that those insights that we can then f find a way to express and share 
Um, anyone that's wanting to ask questions to Claire, if you can, um, um, you can either, un there's a, with, uh, at the moment there's a very small number of us, so if you want to just, you can unmute yourself, um, which is at the bottom left, if you unmute yourself to um, ask a question, that's absolutely um, fine. So just um, take a moment just to see if there's anyone that wants to ask a question now before we um, carry on. I would, I would love to hear the experience of the th or four of you of, of that sort of that feeling of I should be doing something or I shouldn't be doing something because of X, Y, Z. And, and then underneath that, what we, what we just know to do and that we just do. I'd, I'd love, have you ever had that experience, any of you guys? Hi. Hey, Sam. Oh, I mean, yes to all of it, really. Um, I think for me with my art, when I first painted was about five or six years ago, there was that I could not, I couldn't not do it. There was colours, there was things coming through. It was just like, I've got to get this out of me. Um, what I'm not so good at is when I'm not feeling that doing anything. <laughs> It's almost I love the, the call. It's like, ah, oh, I have yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It really, the, 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 thing, the lesson for me is really to show up anyway, which yeah. is what I'm learning to do. But I'm very much in that space of I love, I love it when it's, when it's natural, when it's really coming through. And I have done things where I think I've shown up and stuff's come out, but it's never quite to me as, as powerful as the stuff that really wants to come out of me. Mm. Um, so I have, actually haven't painted for a good few months. I mean, really, because nothing's, nothing's been that powerful. So this is, I didn't know I was coming on here for anything other than to oh. see you. And it's really <laughs> interesting. Like, oh, that's relevant. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also I've got, I had an idea for a book for two years that, and obviously my, my area is obviously coaching and, and art and I, I've written a couple of blogs, but that's not where I see myself. Yeah. So I have an idea about where I see what I can do. But then this book idea is very, very strong and, 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 it, and I haven't done it, but I'm sure I'd be able to do it. You know, it's just, yeah. yeah. So again, another area where I'm very good at telling everybody else. <laughs> 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 but my blocks they're they're real <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but it's it's again it's just going back to the power of what we're actually dealing with and who we actually are i mean that source power that that we we out of nothing out of nothing we create blogs and painting yeah. and it, it, as you said anything and it's that that almost that reverence to that space mm. that is us yeah and it's even within us it's, it is who we are oh and, so beautiful yeah oh, yeah it, and it's and we go and i forget and i forget and i and then i remember like, oh my god we're so lucky mm. you know mm. and when i don't see it i just don't see it but then when i see it and i get to create it's you know we're blessed and we're blessed to know where it came, where it comes from because my experience was that when I first started painting was when I was in a really dark place before I found the principles and it was just this urge for colour but I always knew it was coming from somewhere else but I didn't really have any grounding or any framework for it but then the principles really gave me that you know that it's such a beautiful understanding they're so graceful in what they show us of what's really going on for us yeah and for that and you know i just feel so blessed to be part of this and to know all you guys and you know oh, yeah. thank you but yeah that's my experience and maybe i'll paint or write a book or maybe i won't but, <laughs> <laughs> but so cool. i love what you're saying sam and it's it's really making me realize how like every single thing we do is a creative act isn't it like every thought is just pure creativity I remember I did the write, a writing course with Steve Chandler and Michael Neal and I was like, Steve was talking about having written 50 books and I was just thinking, God, he's, it's exactly the same. He's, he's written 
he's created 50 books and I've created 500 million reasons they're not writing 50 books and it, it's, it's exactly the same creative process like in a way one neither one nor the other is any better it's just it's just pure creativity and then um, <laughs> it's just like it's it's neutral really what 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 we create is neutral and um but it's also it's just so cool to I think to get closer and closer to the like you were saying about the source like that source of of freshness and fresh idea and things that we've no, like never thought of before that suddenly come together in our heads and all everything that we've ever done can produce you know come together in a different way in our heads to then produce something else and that is, is just exhilarating isn't it that that being the channel for the newness I think is is rather than the the channel for the old stories around why I'm not writing or what everyone's thinking of me and it's like yeah <laughs> it's creation but it's just not so much fun I guess <laughs> yeah 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 i love it yeah thank you it's yeah it's it's really interesting really interesting yeah. to see where where it just doesn't look like it's god but it is yeah, <laughs> yeah. because it all is oh. she's saying we go back to that neutrality of it's all the one thing it yeah. just we have preferences and and that's okay yeah and i just see it when I see it that's it. So the only thing I can do and share what I can see and yeah yeah I just yeah I feel that we kind of all you know you forget you know I used to read your blogs and think oh I'm so jealous well, before I knew you she's <laughs> such an amazing writer and I'm never gonna and you were up here and then I met you and it was like oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> This lovely fellow human. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry to disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't disappoint. It's that kind of feeling of, you know, it's so easy to forget what we're bringing to the table as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really. And yeah. that, yeah, that's the, that's the thing that, that uniqueness, isn't it? That there's, there's, it makes, it makes me realize how, like, the, how, completely irrelevant comparison is there's just oh. nothing nothing in it at all is there there's no no useful information whatsoever yeah but yeah. comparison is the death of happiness yeah. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? it makes sense because we're, we're so just us there's nothing else it's just us yeah yeah how, how about you sarah what's what's your experience with writing and um well, since prior to this deeper understanding, um, I would struggle with 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 writing. Like I said, the um, so I suppose the main difference is prior to this deeper understanding, the thoughts would come up, and I'd have those kind of um, ideas that people would be criticising me, and I'd take it so I'd create all these ideas in my head about what's going to happen and make it so personal that I just, it was paralyzing. Um, I still managed to write a few blog posts and put them out there, but really it was safe because I knew no one was really, really seeing them. Um, <laughs> since this deeper understanding, which um, um, with the three principles, I, for me, it was, it's just it's just changed everything because I've been able to depersonalize it so the thoughts can still be the same but I'm not making them about me I know they're not saying anything about me they're not tell they're not telling me truth any truth about what someone else thinks about my writing or whether I'm a good writer or a bad writer or is there's you know like you say there's this neutrality to it which enables me to be able to play and have fun and um, so I had the deeper understanding in April this year and by 
August, I was running my first ever online course called Unlock Your Creative Potential, which um, Julie's on the call, actually, and she was uh, one of the participants of that. So so that's, what, May, it was the end of April as well, so that's May, June, July. So in four months, I'd gone from being frightened to create and put myself out there to... (laughs) (laughs) That is so cool. And, And just seeing what happens. And like I said, the thoughts are still there. I'm, you know, the, the, the kind of nervous energy or if I want to label it as nervous energy, it could be excitement, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, all of that can still go on. Yeah. Yet it doesn't stand in the way of ideas flowing through me and life living through me. I, you know, I, I can, I can get that side of my, you know, that part of myself can kind of, um, I can have less of me, me on my mind move it you know get out of my own way as I like to sort of term it whereas before I'd very much get in my own way (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. so cool I love that yeah how how about Julian Sue what's your what's your experience Sue I know some of (laughs) hi um I'm having a really interesting journey, I think, with with writing at the minute. It, it's interesting having kind of started working with Sarah and um, getting an understanding of the three principles. And the really big thing for me is seeing thought for what it is instead of it being information that is kind of governing me if you like that's like kind of how it felt um and the difference it's made I think is that I've always enjoyed writing and I've written a blog in different blogs in different forms for quite a long time but I've never kind of felt like it was something that was anything more than a luxury to play with and and do it was never sort of a a thing to me that could just be my thing I don't know if that makes any sense it was always kind of um a lot of the thoughts about you know who do I think I am to think that I can do this and very much kind of what other people have said about um being judged by it I remember you know the first few times I blogged anything and putting it out there and I'd reread it and reread it and reread it and think oh god what are they thinking about this bit and that bit and then have people read it how many people have read it and who are those people and what do they think and you're like oh. <laughs> and that was a bit crazy with it and now I find that when I write um I'm not sort of attached to that in the same way it's, it, it feels like it's a different thing I feel more like it's I'm doing it because I want to and and if people choose to engage with it great mm. um they can take from that what they will but if they don't or if they don't like it it doesn't matter (laughs) it's okay that's up to them it doesn't matter the thing that I'm battling with I think at the moment is that it still feels like a bit of a luxury to do it so I don't give myself the time to do it Mm. It's, so it's kind of I, I've just come back from a week's holiday and whilst I was away I kept a journal and I couldn't stop writing and I was writing in it all the time and just stuff coming into my mind and I don't know if I'll do anything with it but it was just really enjoyable to do now that I'm back home I'm like, oh, I can't sit down and write because I should be doing that and I should be doing this and I should be doing the other. So all these ideas are going round in my mind of things I want to write about. Yes. But I'm not giving myself, allowing myself to do it. And I'm finding that to be quite a battle. And then I'm sort of feeling myself going into, oh, God, there's a new idea, but I've not done anything with the old idea. What if the old <laughs> idea goes? And now there's all, another one and another one. What do I do? Oh, which one do I do? <laughs> At some point, I'm going to have to just let myself off the hook and sit and write. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. That's really funny. It's so... It's so uh... It's funny what we've got in our heads about what's uh, 
valid activity and what's not, isn't it? It's so um, I remember, <laughs> I remember once I I, I went through a, a period of all I all like all I could do it seemed was was write like I I just was writing 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 and sometimes I just like put my head up from my computer and look around at mess everywhere and like no not much food in the house for the kids and I was like leaving at the last minute to get them and and I actually remember looking at like there was some pots and vases that were just like it was just like it was a whole shelf of mess and I was thinking oh god I'm what a failure I am all I'm doing is this bloody writing and I'm, all the important stuff I'm not doing and then I was on a call with some with some other coaches that evening and one of them said oh god you know what all I'm doing at the moment I'm just tidying all I'm doing is tidying 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 and I should be writing <laughs> it was so funny like and neither of us could help it we were just doing what we what we had to be doing at that time it was it was funny <laughs> but yeah I remember it's interesting what you were saying about um like that shift you made between really obsessing over how many people were reading something or the likes or comments and I remember Jamie Smart talking about his book results when he went all out like you probably all saw fully all out to get it onto the Sunday Times bestseller list with all these offers and emails and posts every day and and he really he said like he put he wanted it on the bestseller list so he went all out he put every ounce of energy into getting it up there and then the day that he had the phone call to say that he it was on the list he was like okay and there's like <laughs> and and he, he really could see for himself like it just was right for him to do that and any thought of whether it was a good or a bad thing was was like a made-up thing in the moment and um there's so much freedom in that isn't it that we can really write and write and write or we can go all out to get it as high profile as possible and and that's cool and also it doesn't it's 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 only what our thought is making of any of it in the moment that whether it's a good or bad thing it's god it's so crazy isn't it it's so crazy <laughs> it's so fascinating and, oh sorry no no go, go on sam yeah. All it was is that the fact is, or even in all of that, like it's got anything to do with us. Yeah. Like, once we put it out mm. there, it's not ours. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm. So, you know, we, we, we're off the hook, really. Once it's done, yeah. our, and our job is bringing it through. Yeah. You know, where it goes is where it goes. We have, you know, things go viral because they go viral. Yeah. Nothing to do with, the, you know, the, the buck stops once we've done it. That's how mm. it looks to me. Is that... Would you say that as well? I, 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 it's so interesting, like, it's, because we could even take that it's got nothing to do with us further back, couldn't we? Like, yeah. like none of it's got anything to do with us. Yeah. Whether, <laughs> whether, uh, yeah, like the whole thing, the writing, the putting it on Facebook, the yeah. publicity, it's only, it's only ever ideas that are coming to us from completely out of the blue. And, and whether we know to act on them or not, that's also out of our control, isn't it? And yeah. so, yeah, it's mad. But I think we are literally off the hook for the whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I would, um, with thinking about that, I would like to ask you something, Claire, if I, if I may, yeah. which is um, um, with your... Um, the post that you mentioned about the Me Too campaign, um, that obviously that generated really mixed reactions. There were yeah. some people that could see beyond your words to what you were pointing to, and then there were other people that were getting very fixated on every word, you know, on the words yeah. that you used or didn't use. Yeah. And um, um, your response to that. Um, was another post which was uh, glorious but I just wonder was just bearing in mind what Sam was just um, alluding to there that once it's out there um you know we're off the hook how did you feel about the about 
how it was being received by some people and, and, and then for you to then go on to, to write the next piece. Would you mind speaking to that? No, no it's, it's such a lovely question, Sarah. It, yeah, I think my, my reflection on it is that, and it was a really big learning for me in everything, in coaching and speaking everything, is, is that we, there's, we can't be too loving in a way, you know, we, and I think that the first post I wrote, I think was not, although I, you know, it, 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 everything in it was what we're talking about here. Um, but I think the, the tone of it was, was, was not, not very, um, human in a way not very it was like it was so abstract that I that I think I missed the mark in terms of the personal experiences that people go through and that look in every respect completely real and and so the second post was to really really bring back the the two things that are going on so the um the fact that we're either immersed in an experience and it looks totally real or we are having a, a level of understanding that that experience is coming to us from thought. And, um, and so, I th although the second article got much less attention, I think the second article is the one that I'm most proud of because it, and I think it, for me, like, it's really informed everything now is that is that we although we are sending out our stuff and we're writing into this unknown really this made-up audience that we can only ever have in our head the the things that connect us all and and make us all the same are are the things to bring into every piece of writing really it's um it's hard to explain. I know, I know I'm not doing a very good job here, but it, but talk, talking to what is true for all of us in the most compassionate way that we, we have available to us means that our words will be much easier for people to, to read or listen to. Um, whereas I think sometimes the, what we're saying, I think through the inside out understanding can be, can be quite confrontational if, if we're, if it's, if it looks like it's undermining what someone sees as completely real or it's denial or it's head in the sand or, you know, it's it, when, when people are so immersed in an experience, if we're saying basically that's not a real experience, it's, it's you know, it's not, um, it, 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 we need, I think it there needs so much compassion and understanding in the way we talk about it that to enable people to actually hear it even slightly um so yeah it was it was really good it was it was really um enlightening i guess not that i'm enlightened but you know what i mean <laughs> it, it, like it, it it helped me me see more clearly how how things can can come over as as confrontational or, or or actually not true if, if it contradicts so completely what people are experiencing yeah but it, I consciously avoided getting caught up in the in the replying to each comment on that because there was no there was absolutely no possibility of any any clarity there whatsoever you know in in two comments bashing heads with each other and 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 so I needed to for my own sake as well take it out of out of the detail and back into the human threads of it all yeah yeah thanks for asking Sarah yeah it was um it's an interesting one yeah and you did uh yeah like I said the, the second post was um was wonderful and I noticed that some people who were who didn't find the first one um um 
you know they felt that the, the pieces were missing the humanity was missing they were the ones that tended to comment on the second one saying yeah. yes i now we're on yeah. the same page now mm -hmm. i resonate with what you're with what you're sharing so mm -hmm. um i completely take your point about not engaging um in the um the previous dialogue because if somebody's got one if that someone's in one position and you're trying to, to talk to them about another one but they're not ready to hear it they're just not gonna no. not gonna hear it so it's like uh i suppose i think it, well in the coaching world we sort of talk about you know meet somebody where they where where, where they're at and then you can yes. maybe um you know see if they see something different or you see something different so it's nice that you were able yeah. to you know you were able to see things in what they shared as well that's wonderful yeah absolutely yeah it's really true and i think there's such a a big part for us to play in in how in also exploring how often we get tripped up by the illusion of thought and you know it's um it's so powerful i think when people show how they move from clarity to zero clarity and we just we just really see how all of us are in the same boat there's, there's just no no difference ever is there yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm conscious of the time because i know um claire that you need to to uh finish the call in five five minutes actually oh, so, <laughs> it's gone, i know it's gone really it's gone really really fast hasn't it um there's one one quick piece that I wanted to to say, which is which is about writing. That at the moment in the three um, three principles community, there is a, a book being pulled together. Um, I think it's Co collective voices of an awakened humanity, um, right. which Laurie Holmes is um, overseeing. But there's different different people in the community heading up different chapters. So an invitation to anyone on the call and listening to the call, if you want to have a go at writing. So this is an opportunity to, to write about your own experience. So um, um, I'm going to, I will make sure that this recording is put onto YouTube and I'll put the details of that book on there. And um, so if, if anyone wants to put a submission forward or have a, you know, have a little play around with writing and see if you want to put something forward for one of those chapters. Um, I think the deadline, the initial one's the 30th of November. But anyway, I just wanted to sort of say that and I'll put the information in the, um, when I share the, the webinar. But yeah, Claire, if you, is it, there's anything else you'd like to share about your creative process or any message that you feel you want to speak to right now, that would be lovely to, to finish with. I, I would just say maybe like given what we've talked about like when we when we have an idea really there's no there's not a single reason why we wouldn't do that idea really nothing and and that's quite interesting I think like there there's really always like why wouldn't I it's it's that that is the power behind everything really isn't it it's um yeah, it, 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 the idea is the gift for us, and and we're the we're the form, the creative form that can bring it alive. So yeah, <laughs> thank you everyone. It's been so nice seeing you all. Yeah, really nice, and thank you, Sarah, very much for this opportunity. Thank you, and um, I'm I'm pleased that I um I had the idea to open it up to more people, and rather than straight away shutting that down because it's too scary, <laughs> I went with it for that kind of demons. That's I've modelled what you've just shared. <laughs> you exactly have in action. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Thank Brilliant. you, thank you everyone for joining live, and I hope everyone enjoys the recording. Okay, take care. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.